Hello, everyone out there. Once again, this is Frank. This is Leonard. This is the Whiskey Anonymous podcast video. Today, we got a special treat. It's not your normal tasting. We have someone from a very special distillery. Please introduce yourself. Hi, all. Uh, thank you, Frank. Thank you, Leonard, for having me here today. I hope I got your names the right That's way. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure meeting you all today. Uh, it's great to be welcome here in the Philippines. My name is uh, Giancarlo Bianchi. I'm a sales and technical director at the Penderian Distillery from Wales. And uh, hopefully I can guide you to our products and uh, the way we make whiskeys uh, today, which is uh, quite unique, uh, as hopefully you'll uh, appreciate by the end of uh, our discussion. Awesome. Yeah. So obviously the first thing, if you guys hopefully would notice, is the pronunciation of this fine whiskey. It's Penderin, correct? That's right. Most people will tend, out, tend to say Penderin, but it's actually Penderin. Yeah, correct. Spot on. Awesome. Um, well, I guess one of the first things is what, you know, what makes... Welsh whiskey or Pendarin whiskey different from, say, your normal uh, Scotch, you know, your Scotch or maybe even a bourbon. You know, different. What makes it different than other whiskeys? Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, usually, usually people think Welsh. That's a key point of difference. That's really just a geographical difference. Mm-hmm. The key difference uh, for us, obviously, we're not uh, a bourbon, which means that we don't use a, a mixed mash bill where you might have different cereals in the production. As a single malt whiskey, we have a hundred percent malt, uh, malted barley as part of our production and we have a batch distillation in copper pot stills and that's really what defines a single malt not just in Wales obviously but uh, in Scotland and anywhere else in the world where these days you produce, produce single malt whiskies. Uh, there are a few other things that make Penderin absolutely unique. Um, one is the distillation technology. Right. Traditional, any, traditionally anywhere you go, mostly Scotland I guess, but there's probably about 60 nations around the world produce single malts now. They all tend to use um, a double distillation yeah. for, for the production, or most of them. And uh, when we set out to produce our whiskies, we decided we don't want to make a, a scotch in Wales. We want to make something truly unique in Welsh. Okay. Also, the production methods and uh, also in our house style of the whiskey, which we'll try later on. Um, and we use a single pot distillation. And we combine that with the fractionation te- technology mm-hmm. that allows us to produce a new mixed spirit which comes out of the still at about 20% ABV higher than what you usually get in a traditional single malt distillery. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's the big difference. I mean, it's got a key impact on the mouthfeel, the flavor profile of the whiskey. You have a new mix spirit, which is uh, much uh, reduced in the oily compounds that you might mm. usually get from a double distillation. Yeah. So it's much cleaner when it comes out of the still, the spirit. I mean, it makes it a great sort of, a, almost like a blank canvas on which uh, we can really soak the flavors of the wood into the maturing spirit as time goes on. And then most people that uh, are familiar with single molds, they will have try scotch. They try Penderin for the first time, perhaps not knowing what it is, and they think, hmm, this is not a scotch. But that's not because it's from Wales, but it's because of the way we produce our, our whiskies. Nice. Leonard, uh, you had a question. Yeah, no, I was just wondering. So, obviously, you are a wealth whiskey. There isn't really anyone else in the game, I think, from Wales. Um, so, did the histo- I mean, historically, did Welsh whiskey have any influence on how you made? Because I think they were making whiskey in Wales like a hundred years ago. That, that, that's right. That's right. There was a distillery on the other. We are in South Wales. Uh, the the um, previous distillery uh, was in North Wales. Um, distillation technology clearly wasn't what we use today. For them, it was probably more the more traditional pot steel technology. Uh, that's been essentially was wound up in 1893, so it's been closed for a very long time. Um, that was uh, 1903, sorry, 1903. Hmm. So uh, the only thing that uh, it doesn't really have too much in common. Actually, we know that the whiskey was uh, slightly peated, or peated, which is something we have within our uh, portfolio. Um, other than that, it was a, a geographical commonality. So it was, when we launched our Madeira Finish, our house style, that was in uh, 2004. It's been over 100 years since uh, um, whiskey had been produced in Wales. So for us, it was a great opportunity to restart the tradition right. all these years on. Yeah. And just one other little point. There are a few other distilleries in Wales, but very small setup. So really, at the moment, we are still the only single mode. Uh, available out there, but there are a few other distilleries opening up a uh, shop uh, oh. at a very, very, very small scale at the moment. Right. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Excellent. Wow. Um, now, real quick, you know, um, are you, because I don't actually know the ge- uh, where exactly it's located. I know Penderin as a town is like, it's a coastal town, correct? 
Uh, actually, it's, uh, it's uh, about uh, 45 minutes away from the coast. Okay. So it's, uh, it's up in the hills. Pandain is, is in a uh, national park mm, and, uh, okay. of outstanding natural beauty. Um, so we're not far from the sea, but uh, slightly in the hills. Yeah. So okay. So, it, so, in terms of, so in terms of geography, we are about um, the quickest way to get to Wales, I guess, from London. You catch a train from London, Paddington. Two hours, you, you get into Cardiff, which is the capital of Wales in the Great. south. And then uh, hopefully we'll pick you up and you're up at the distillery within uh, another hour. Wow. Okay. All right. So it would be interesting uh, to taste because, you know, to something different, something, you know, obviously I was, I saw a movie and I forget the name of the movie, but the, like the... There's a college in Pandaren, and they're on the coast, uh, closer to the coast. I'm like, okay, that's what, that was oh, my right, idea. Okay. Oh, interesting movie. You must have seen. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was not the yeah, greatest yeah. movie. I don't. Know. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> yeah, Pandaren is only a small village. It's not even a town. It's only got about three, four hundred people. Oh wow. A couple of pubs, not a shop. So it's a um, very small, very remote. So you can put your story. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, indeed. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I and say it's kind of a cooler climate then? Um, typically Welsh and British, you know, it's not too different from what you get up in Scotland, perhaps a few degrees warmer. Okay. Uh, on the west coast of the UK is quite exposed to the Atlantic weather coming in, lots of rain, lots of wind. Right. Uh, nothing like here, that's for sure. No, no, the Philippines, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a different thing altogether here. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and taste some whiskey, you know, that's... What we're waiting for, of course. Excellent. Excellent. So I believe the first one we're going to be uh, drinking is this Pendarin Myth. That's right. Right. Yep. Beautiful. I love the dragon. So is that uh, the as we'll soon see? Um, that uh, looks different from uh, the typical Pendarin model. Uh, um, yes, I guess uh, it does. So this is part of a range of whiskies. There are three within this range, um, all the similar kind of format, say kind of label. Um, they all bottle of forty-one percent ABV. And they're all based on a, a first, the first part of the maturation is the same for all of them. Okay. They all start their life in ex Buffalo Trace casks, which we buy directly from the distiller in Kentucky. We put mm. our new spirits in the casks, which is reduced from 90% ABV down to 63.4% ABV, and uh, obviously stays there as it matures. When the whisk is practically matured or ready to be bottled, our distiller blender, Einstein, will um, select some of the casks and transfer the whiskey into uh, finishing casks. Uh, in the case of meat, the finishing cask is a cask that used to contain red wine. But before the cask is used, it's taken apart by a cooperage we work with in Portugal. Okay. They, ta uh, they take each individual staves, they take a layer of wood off, they toast the wood, heat it up to bring some flavors from the inside of the wood to the surface, and then they burn those flavors. So you, you got a very active new surface of wood. And then some of those finishing casks are mixed with the expert matured casks. And uh, we, we produce this expression, which uh, where the effect of the wood is really important. Yeah. So you, um, so I don't know if you guys have had a chance to know it yet. Um, it's a. So I test you. What do you smell on, on them? I mean, there's a beautiful. What? First, there's a beautiful sweet flavor that yeah, that starts off yeah, right away. Yeah. I got a really nice fruit. Yeah, like a, like a red fruit. Right, yeah, red so so what, that's what we often do. We, we ask when we do a masterclass or presentation, what do you think is the reason the nose? Because it's always interesting to, from my viewpoint, when you taste the whiskey, see what it knows first. Is it a peat? Is it not peat? Is it sweet? You know, what do you think? You can smell floral, fruit. Right. And then, some, and then see what happens when you taste it. Of course. Because very often it, <laughs> it's a bit misleading. And I've got um, at least... Uh, this is, this is a touch misleading, Pandarin Meat. Pandarin Peat it is, um, is a quite misleading. It's a very light pitted finish. We'll get to that later. Um, so it's always a bit of fun to see if he, a whiskey catches you out. Yeah, no, of course. Well, the mm. first thing on the nose that also gets me is uh, 41%. And, um, it has a nice tickle. I mean, yeah. usually you get a, you go for a higher, higher ABV. Yeah. You get that little bit of alcohol yeah. sharpness yeah. and acidity, but then that. that that's nice to here. So one thing we often do as well, um, you were telling me to me earlier on that you attended some uh, presentation by Jim Murray. Oh, of course, yeah. something our good friend. Do. Yeah, He likes it as well. If you, if you want to explore the aromas a little bit more, you hold your ga glass in your hand for that, cover it, but that, that way essentially oh, yeah. warms up the whiskey. Then you can, if you, if you smell a sort of a, smell neutral, I guess, <laughs> put them on top of the glass, leave it there for 30 seconds to a minute, and. Uh, then uh, what that does obviously concentrates the aromas and then uh, it gives you another opportunity to explore the whiskey. Oh, longer. yes. And um, in, in Wales, 
when people come to visit us at the distillery, mm -hmm. we do the same thing in our visitor center. And, uh, we said to people that bring your whiskey close to you. Yes. You must love your whiskey and, you, and uh, give it a cuddle. And in, yeah. in, in Welsh, giving it a cuddle is kuch. So you give your whiskey a kuch. A kuch. A cuddle, a kuch. Yeah, so it's your first Welsh word you're going to learn today. Yes, kuch. <laughs> mm. But yeah. obviously you all want to love our whiskey. Of course. Mm. So I get a little bit of um, spices perhaps as well on the nose. Um, yeah, but light, light baking spices. Yeah. yeah. Okay, shall we, shall we go ahead and try it? Or? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. It makes my mouth water. So, what do you think? Is there a contrast between the nose and the palate? Uh, there's, there's some similarities. I mean, you still get that nice sweetness. Um, Almost like a, I said like a, almost like a red wine type of, for me, type of uh, nuance to it. Yeah, you, you get quite a bit of an um, effect of the, you lose a lot of the flavors of the red wine because of the way the wood is processed, but right. you still get some uh, effect, perhaps ta tannin effect the tannins, that comes yeah. through, comes through the, um, from the wood. And what uh, I find uh, it has, um, compared to the nose, Got a touch of bitterness. It's sweet and bitter sweet a little bit. It's not just uh, the sweetness and the, the, yeah. the fruit. Gets a bit of tropical fruit. Often people find a bit of a pear, dro pear drops, pear yeah. uh, flavors in the whiskey. But, yeah. well, it's definitely more malty mm -hmm. than the nose. I was going to say yeah. there's more cereal on there. Yeah. It's interesting because when you have this type of bitterness, I usually expect there to be a bit of dryness as well. And I guess it Maybe it's the unique distillate. I, I don't get that dryness, but yeah. I wouldn't know there's larges. Yeah. There isn't much dryness, <laughs> partly uh, because uh, if the, this, the wood had not been treated, the finishing cask had not been treated the way it, did, it was, yeah. it would get a bit more dryness because uh, um, cars that had held red wine would, would give you much more dryness because you've got all these fresh tannins. Mm. Here they're very much subdued because of um, the way the cask is processed. Right. So it's a quite a smooth and easy drinking sort of a uh, whiskey, very accessible as well. That's my opinion. Anyway, no, 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 what you guys a, think. no but, for um, sure. If you tried many Scotch whiskeys before, single malts or single yeah. malts or anywhere else, what you might find, uh, the mouth feels slightly less uh, oily perhaps as well. Although there, are, yeah. there is a little bit of oiliness there, but it's not certainly as rich as you might expect from a single malt whiskey. No, for sure. It was great. I'm gonna drink a little bit of water here so we can move on to the next. Oh, we don't have water. For, we gotta get water for you for the next. Uh, video. No, no worries. <laughs> I'll survive yeah. without water. <laughs> I like the yeah, I like the fruitiness of it. it. It transitions from red fruit to kind of that pear flavor to a little bit of orchard fruit. I get a bit of peaches at the very end. Mm. Um, but I mean, definitely, it's I would say inoffensive yeah. altogether. I mean, it's something where it's hard not to like. And it's richly flavored, you know. It's, it's not like the flavor intensities are subdued by the fact that you're not getting a whole lot of, of that bitterness. You don't have a whole lot of that oiliness, but you still have that rich, yeah. you know, that nice richness of uh, fruit flavor in there. So when, when I did the tasting a couple of nights ago, somebody uh, obviously you meet a range of uh, drinkers in terms of their experience of what they like and what they don't like. Yeah. But often the more experienced drinkers will end up graduating to very single cask whiskeys, very uh, heavy uh, sort of. Uh, the whiskey is perhaps even peated, and uh, one of them tried this and said, yeah, this is a nice whiskey, it's a whiskey for girls. Oh. <laughs> and, um, but it's, it's a comment we often get, because um, uh, one characteristic of Pendering whiskey is not just Pendering meat, most of the ones we're going yeah. to try today, it is that it's a very accessible style. Yes. The fact that the New Mexico spirit is so light, not very oily, the way we use the cask, the fruitiness, um, the light of the spirit mm. make, uh, this probably more than any of the others we try today. Very, very accessible and easy right. drinking. So it's a comment that you can see how it makes sense. And, um, yeah. And what we find generally, where we've got a bit more sort of presence in the market in Europe, we often find that uh, we find quite a bit more favor. Uh, there's a higher proportion of women that enjoy ah. uh, whiskies compared to other whiskies. Certainly at this sort of uh, uh, level of the of the range, where it's only 41 percent. Right. Um, the, one of the key distinctions between this range and the, the other whiskies we try later on is that uh, we do try to be a bit more accessible. Yes. When we put them together as well. But it's also a general characteristic of the whiskies, they are quite uh, accessible. And uh, what we also try, always try to find with our whiskies is uh, the balance. As, as you noticed, I mentioned the finish, but yeah. I also mentioned that uh, not all the cars that are used for the bottle are finished. So it's, all, it's always about uh, 
picking those flavors on a finishing cask, a double maturation cask, or a, a mixture of uh, whiskey matured in different casks, and putting them together so that we don't we don't want to overdo it with the cask we use. So on the next one we're going to try our Madeira finish. We could have been much richer in Madeira flavors, right. but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to find the balance, balance. with the whiskey. You know, I'm glad you say a lot of women like it because my girlfriend got out of whiskey for a while. Right. Okay. This is something I could bring her back in. Good. You know, she does enjoy whiskey from time to time. I mean, not not overly peated stuff. I, that turns her off. But, yeah, so this would be great. And, you know, a good thing also about the women, because from what I've been reading, women is one of the fastest growing markets for whiskey, especially in the United States. I would like to be with more women who drink whiskey. I mean, no. I'm not saying I like drinking with a bunch of men, but you do it all the time. Yeah. It's tiresome. And you know what, uh, about 17% of our uh, population of our whiskey group, Whiskey Society of Manila, is uh, women. So 17% of 6,000. That's still quite a big number. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is number. something that... I mean, it's, uh, on the subject of women, something that uh, this gives me an opportunity to say. Yeah. When we, we hired uh, as a company uh, distillers uh, over the years, and we now we, we had a stable worker force, if you want, we got a... Uh, Three female distillers, other distiller, no oh, male wow. distillers, and uh, um, and it so, just so happens that over the years, as we hired the um, uh, the way one of the tests to become one of the distillers was a nose test, mm -hmm. and it just it turns out that generally speaking, women tend to have a, a bit of a better nose than yeah. a, than men. So we got uh, Laura who runs uh, Laura Davis runs our mm. distillery most of the time. She she produces the new make spirit uh, that goes into the casks, and we got Aista Yuknevichute. She's a Lithuanian. Uh, of origin anyway, and uh, she tends to select the cars that go into every bottling and look after the maturation warehouse. And she's not also working with another lady from Wales, Beth and Morgans, and she's uh, she joined us about 18 months ago, and uh, she's uh, training to become a fully graduated wow. distiller and blender. So that's a, an, inc an accidental sort of a coincidence in a way of, of uh, our hiring sort of over the years, but. Uh, for us, it's something that is uh, really quite interesting. So, you lady followers uh, yeah. in, the, in the society yeah. might uh, enjoy that. Yeah, I think they will. I think. The, 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 this was a great statement. Um, honestly, if I have to describe it, no, I have to hear the word lady. Uh, the best way I can describe that, hmm. it seems to be a hybrid for me between single malt Irish and single malt Scotch. Oh, I can see that. Because it has a lot of the intensity you'll find in Scotch. But it has that ease of approach and that floral, fruity floral that you expect from the Irish. Yeah, from Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the, so I mean, the, the, it's, and a that's wonderful, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful synthesis there. And that, that makes absolute sense because, as you know, Irish distilling is based on a, a triple distillation right. a lot of the time. But essentially, what you you do, you you do go to a slightly higher ABV, you take a bit more of the oily compounds yeah. out, and you get some similar characteristic to this. But as far as we know, there is no other distiller. Well, so Irish single malt, yeah, there is some, I guess, coming out these days. But uh, so if you compare to other single malts, uh, we don't think that there is any other distiller that produces new make spirit and 90% percent ABV. So no. the, that cleanness of the spirit, you don't really find it uh, anywhere else. No, for sure. So, All right, let's uh, move on to our next one. And you were saying this is your house. Yeah, so the next one is... Uh, uh, so and there's the bottle here. This is a, a Penderin Madeira finish. This is the house style. So this is the first Penderin that ever came out. It came out on the 1st of March uh, um, 2004. Wow, okay. Um, and uh, oh, <laughs> I'll put it there on the podium. Yeah. There you go. And um, so essentially, obviously, that's been around the longest. Like all the range within uh, that kind of bottle, mm -hmm. or that the gold range, um, is. is a um, bottle of 46% ABV, so okay. a little bit higher in ABV. Um, like the other whiskey we just tried, and they're they're all premium whiskies. Uh, we put a lot of care and attention in everything we do, from the point of uh, obviously buying the barley to uh, distillation and choosing our cast. So we, we do position ourselves as a very premium product. Um, and with the Pendera in Madeira, we are going to do exactly the same as we did early on, perhaps, to give it a bit of a kutch. Mm -hmm. so if I repeat it early enough, you might go home, you might go home and talk about kutches with your, with your partners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be great. Oh, 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 oh. So, but uh, here again... Um, I'll be sleeping on the kutch. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, again the pro while you do that, i just explain to you the process is the same as the Pendera in Mid, which you just tried. The maturation starts in next bourbon cask, yeah. and then we work with producers on the island of Madeira, uh, which is an island uh, just off the coast of Portugal, where they produce uh, 40 wi fortified wine mm. uh, called Madeira wine. Right. So most people will be more familiar with the port wine. Yeah. 
uh, Madeira wine is produced a bit differently. There's more of an influence of the heat or the climate on the island. Um, the types of grapes are different, and uh, but it, it's got very specific characteristics. So uh, dry raisin sultanas are sort of one of the characteristics you might find uh, on the nose and on the palate. And um, so this uh, one reason we have this style as well is that. Um, it was a great opportunity to underline our uniqueness, not geographically, but also in our house style, the way we produce our whiskey, our key expression. The Madeira style exists in the market, but it uh, usually tends to be special bottlings. For us, this is uh, our house style. Between this and another expression, uh, about 70, probably 80% of our production is in the Madeira style. So that's okay. again, it's something else that distinguishes Penderin from uh, other single malls, like the Madeira house style. Right. So should we go ahead and yeah. have a taste? Let's have a taste. Oh, so the taste was already on the nose. I get a wonderful variety of dried grapes. So you weren't joking about the raisins. Raisins, dates, sultanas. Yeah, definitely a bit more of the spiciness because yeah. of the higher ABV. Right but it's nice. Um, I love the oiliness of it, the mouthfeel. It's a beautiful oily mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. It's not too watery like you get with some whiskeys. But still at 46%, that's still very approachable compared yeah. to others yeah. that have had 46%. Yeah, this is probably the most approachable of the air cask. Yeah. Alright. So wow. can, I, can I, while you taste a bit more dark, can I take an opportunity to tell you about a couple of other things? How we do the Mat Pandaren, is that okay? Let's do the next video. Next video. One. Next yeah. video. Yeah. Three more. Okay. We could do, in between while we're drinking, we can talk about the other stuff. Okay. No, so, no problem. yeah. All right. Well, anyways, this was both were lovely. Uh, if you guys haven't had these two yet, definitely take the opportunity. Um, thumbs up. Thumbs up, definitely on both. Yeah. Stay tuned. We have three more Pandaren whiskeys left, and of course, a lot more information from Mr. Giancarlo himself. All right. Next video. Thank you guys. Thank bye you. bye.